What's up YouTube, Dale here from Zephyr War Games, and today, because you guys really wanted to see it, I am bringing you the control version of Dark Worlds. Now what makes this different from a normal combo version? Well, quite simply, it doesn't involve the dangers, and it involves a lot more traps, which you can see here. There is also a really cool themed monster that can help you utilise a control element of the deck, and no, I am not talking about uh, Lilith, but you can play Lilith if you wanted to as well. So, with all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe. If you get this video up to 50 likes in the first 24 hours, not only will I bring you the deck list for yourselves in the description, so you can adapt it and build it yourself, but I'll also unlock another variant of Dark Worlds, or just more Dark World content in general. So, with all of that out of the way, let's dive head first into the profile, and explain everything we've got as we've got it. So, this is one of the only, I believe, the, the, only the second version where I've ever actually played one card less than uh, my normal standard 12. So, of course, triple Genta, triple Rainbow, triple Snow, and only two Greffa this time. Uh, the reason for this one is there's actually a card in the deck that can help you Foolish Burial it. Um, it could also be the same uh, for Rainbow as well. So, if you wanted to adapt it and actually cut Rainbow down, you could. But Rainbow has a better discard effect in regards to just getting to your general plays. Um, so, like, where Rainbow can search out your Greffa, it can't be done vice versa. Then we've got two catalyzers. Now it's actually really important catalyzer in this one because this one gives you the ability uh, without using the dangers, and there is a reason we aren't using the dangers, which we'll see shortly. Um, but without using the dangers, it also helps you trigger your cards. It gives you instant access to rank fours, which in this version as well, because you're going control, actually gives you a very powerful boss monster that not a lot of people are aware you can make in this deck and causes your opponent a lot of issues. We've then got the one beige, the one gold, the one silver, and then of course the one Ceruli. Obviously Ceruli is really good in the control matchup. Um, and the reason it's so good is because we do play a card in the deck that when you give them Ceruli, you lock them under Ceruli. So if you put all of your cards in defense, they can't then just attack over Ceruli, um, use Ceruli to crash and then unlock their board. So you could arguably be playing two Ceruli, but again, the reason I've gone with this ratio of one gold, one silver, one Ceruli is because you can't be guaranteed to be going first all the time. Which is why I've got the gold, because gold can then help clear the board. I can then still set up your control lock if you want to as well. So that's it for the Dark World monsters themselves. I'm now going to show you the spice that is the control element. So as with all of the Dark World decks, they do have space for a normal summon. You could very easily put Lava Golem in this if you wanted to. But a card that actually utilizes protecting your monsters and setting up your graveyard alongside... Um, making some of your trap cards that you saw in the first frame of this video in the form of Torrential Tribute even more powerful. So the spice of the normal summon in this version is Fiendish Rhino. Now the reason Fiendish Rhino is so good in this version is all Fiend type monsters you control except himself can't be destroyed by battle or card effect. That will get them a little bit more relevant when you see the trap card. Well, actually, you've already seen the trap card at the start of the video, but that is where something like Torrential Tribute comes into play. On top of that as well, when Phoenix Rider is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can Foolish Burial a Fiend-type monster. So it can put Greffa or Rainbow into the graveyard ready for that hand uh, resource loop. It can also send you Dark Spirit of Banishment, which is another very spicy tech. So, what Dark Spirit of Banishment does is when or if your opponent declares an attack, you can discard this card, and then you get to, uh, at the start of the damage set, you send this card from the hand or field to the graveyard to target a level 8 Fiend monster in your graveyard. Special summon it, but its effects are negated, and if you do, change the attack target to it and perform damage calculation. If a level 8 Fiend monster or monsters is sent to your graveyard while this card is in the graveyard, you get to add it back to the hand. So if it's sent to the graveyard by any means, if it is Foolish Burial off of Fiendish Rhino, you can then add this back to the hand. If it is linked off, you can then add it back to the hand. There's a lot of ways where you can loop this guy, which is really, really kind of cool. And if you wanted to, you can make it a bit more consistent and search it out by sending a scarm and then end phase search this out. But the chances are, just between these two cards here, it's a great little combo, especially with a Torrential Tribute. How does that work, I hear you scream? Well, very simply, you normal summon your Fiendish Rhino, you then continue to make all your plays. Then during your opponent's turn, let's say they normal summon a monster, you can then make them run into a Torrential Tribute. The Torrential Tribute will destroy your Fiendish Rhino, but none of your other Fiends, because he is the only one that can be destroyed by card effects, so once you resolve the chain backwards, Torrential Tribute has already been resolved, and then Rhino gets destroyed, so then Torrential Tribute can't destroy the rest of your board. Off the back of that as well, Finish Rhino can then Foolish Burial the Dark Spirit of Banishment, and if you were to activate your... Um, 
activate your quick play spell in Ascension, you will then be able to add this back to the hand, and it means that the Greff you've discarded, or a rainbow in your graveyard, is then being able to be revived. You protect yourself from being attacked directly. They then have to perform damage calculations. So if your monster is stronger, you get to clear off one of their monsters for pretty much free, uh, and then you get to do it all over again, because then you'll link off the next turn, you'll add this back to the hand, and you keep looping the resource one step further. Really kind of cool options, and I really, really like it, and not a lot of people are expecting Torrential Tribute. Obviously, if you are going against a tier element matchup, then you want to kind of consider your Torrential Tribute in a different manner. You'll probably be looking at something a bit more along the lines of just Ice Dragon's Prison, or more direct counters to the deck, and that's where you would adapt this section, and probably take away that destruction protection abilities and everything else. Continuing on with the rest of the track cards, we are playing at Triple Rivalry. So as you saw from our lineup, we are only playing Fiend Monsters. When you see the extra deck as well, you will see we are only playing Fiend Monsters. So being able to play something like Rivalry is incredibly important. Especially if you're going first, you give your opponent a Cerule. You make sure all of your monsters go to defense, even ignoring Finnish Rhino. Now obviously, you know some Finnish Rhino, that's the one thing that's going to go into attack. But you're only going to do that if you've got the Torrential Tribute play locked up already. Other than that, you give your opponent a Cerule, you activate Rivalry, you put all of your cards in defense so that they can't just attack the Cerule and clear it off. You lock them into Fiends, they then can't break that, it comes back to you, at that point, that's when you kill the Cerule and the rest of your monsters are going to go in for attacks because you'll end up with Greffers, you'll uh, end up with a Greffer Fusion, Rainbows, you name it. The last two track cards that we are maining is Skill Drain. Now this can be taken out and adapted, and a couple of options that I would highly advise you to consider is something like Ice Dragon's Prison, and uh, you can also consider Dark Sacrifice. So for those of you that don't know what Dark Sacrifice does, when your opponent activates a card or effect that would destroy a card or cards on the field, you negate that effect and send a level three um, or lower dark monster from your deck to the graveyard. So you can send a Cerule if it's still stuck in your deck. You can send a Dark Spirit of Banishment. Keep in mind, an effect that says negate and then destroy will of course destroy a card on the field, so you can then Dark Sacrifice it. On top of that, the last track card you could also consider is Archfiend's Ghastly uh, Glitch. And this one is, if you can try a Fiend type monster, you get to target a card on the field, destroy it, and then you can send a Fiend monster from your deck to the graveyard. So again, it's another capability of popping a card, as well as Foolish Burying, either a Greffa, a Rainbow, or heck, you could even Foolish Burial a Fiendish Rhino and then do it again. So you're deck thinning and everything else on top of that. So that's it for the trap cards and pretty much the, the element that makes this from being like a normal danger variant. Like these are your danger cards. These are your, um, your Fabled Raven synchro cards. Like that's your options. Onto the spells, we've of course got Triple Tactics. I've already explained these before. Laws, Ascensions, Gates, Archives, Puppetry, and Brainwashing. Now, if you saw my previous profile, you'll understand why I play the Puppetry. Uh, it's to kind of deal with buy steals because if your opponent tries to target one of your monsters in the graveyard, you're better off activating Puppetry to banish that monster yourself um, because then you're not really losing anything. All you're doing is you're stopping your opponent getting into a buy steal, which is really good. And then Brainwashing, there's so many ways of being able to loop your hand resource back, which is one of the control focuses of this deck that is very, very consistent and powerful. Yes, the discard is random, but because you're playing so many Dark Worlds, it's actually a lot higher chance of resolving this and getting maximum value from it as well. Now we're going to move on to the extra deck. So, when we move into the extra deck, what are we going to see? That is right, we are going to see 99% Fiend Monsters. There are only two cards in the extra deck that aren't Fiends, and that's because they're just too damn good to not be used. So, we'll go back on our links. So, Underworld of the Goddess, level 5 Fiend, busted. Nightmare Griffin! Heck yeah, this is a fiend. It will let us add back our spells and traps from the graveyard. So if they're like, haha, I got rid of that, you just go, okay, discard, add one back. Let's go again. Abomination, an aggressive uh, level four fiend monster. And in case you guys thought I forgot, keep in mind that Griffin is a very nice board negate. Considering your deck can already play under skill drain, all we need to do is make sure that Nightmare Griffin is linked, which is very easy to do, and then it will negate everything else. Obviously what you want to do is you want to make sure this doesn't really go into the extra monster zone, because then it makes it very easy for your opponent to link it. The cards you want to be putting in your extra monster zone will be Mutt Wrecker, which I'll get to in a minute. But that will just out and out and negate your opponent's board. And then you also have Mutt Racker that can then protect your fiends from being destroyed by Battle of Card Effect, Which is B-E-A-U-tiful. Um, and keeping in mind as well, 
The best thing about Mark Cracker with Torrential Tribute, if a monster or monsters you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you get to tribute a fiend monster instead. Now keep in mind, if you were to activate Torrential Tribute, you would be able to tribute another fiend monster that isn't fiendish rhino, because they cannot be destroyed by card effect because of fiendish rhino's effect. Now obviously because um, Mark Rucker says instead, this is where it comes back to, I believe it was like, there was a level two, a link to dragon. If a card stays instead, it can't tribute another card to protect if that other target was already being marked for destruction. So with Mutt Rucker, if you activate Torrential Tribute and you have Phoenix Rhino, and you know you go, I've actually got two Torrential Tributes, I don't want to lose my Phoenix Rhino right now. Because your other Fiends are protected, you could, in theory, Activate Mutt Rucker, tribute off the Mutt Rucker itself, or tribute off, let's say, another random um, Dark Word you've got on the board, and then you could activate another Torrential Tribute, and your Fiendish Rhino would then get destroyed by the second one, leaving your Mutt Rucker or the other Fiendish um, Fiend monster on the board. Nightmare Unicorn, Nightmare Phoenix, both Fiends. Our first non Fiend monster is IP Mascarina, purely because this will get us into this and get us into a very strong and protected Abomination or Griffin, and of course, Underworld Goddess. Mutt Rucker, very, very important in this build. We don't actually play the Zalantis lock just because of rivalry. You want to make sure that when you flip rivalry, you're not putting yourself under an IP. And if you do flip it and you are playing the other card that is not a Fiend and that is Abyss Dweller, you make sure that you chain Abyss Dweller's effect and then get rid of it. So then the graveyard's locked out and then you don't really care from that point on. Then, of course, we've got the two Graffa Fusions, pretty standard on that one. Boguska and Begedes, very standard on that one. And then the last three cards is your boss monster, Mac Daddy, in the extra deck. So, we play Triple D High, uh, Triple D Wave King Caesar with a Marksman King Tell and the Mac Daddy, Triple D Divisor King Deuce Machina. Now, for those of you that don't know what these are, these are DDD monsters. However, Wave King, uh, Wave King Caesar only requires two level four fiend type monsters. Well, that's very easy. So if I was to go um, Zalamander, discard Beige, I can make this? Heck yeah. And then Marksman can be ranked up on top of a level four or a rank four DDD. And then your Divisor King can be ranked on top of any triple D monster. Then if that wasn't enough, your Deuce X Machina has a very nice effect that you can only control one of it, but once per chain, so not a once per turn, just a once per chain, when a monster card your opponent controls activates his effect, quick effect, you can either detach two materials from this card or destroy a dark contract, which you don't have dark contract, so you worry about that none. And if you do, attach that opponent's card to this card as material. So, how is that going to work? Well, very, very simply. Your Wave King is going to have two materials already. As soon as you put your uh, King Tail on top, your King Tail is going to have three materials. As soon as you put the Divisor King, your Divisor King is going to have four materials. So, the first time your opponent activates a monster effect on the field, you use Divisor King's effect. You do attach the two materials under Wave King and then you take it. Meaning that you minus two but plus one, leaving this with three materials. They then activate something else in another chain. You then get to activate Divisor King's effect. You detach the two cards here because you want to make sure you don't give back your opponent their monster that will go to their graveyard if it's going to have some sort of floating effect or benefit to them. By doing so, you will then steal that second monster, meaning that your Divisor King would then still have two materials both owning to your opponent. So you could then, on a third separate chain, use Divisor King's effect again and steal another monster. So you have stolen three monsters from your opponent, in one turn, keep in mind this is once per chain, very, very broken, and then still been able to play. Keep in mind as well, if you've locked them under something like, say, a rivalry, they are not breaking a 3k booty very easily. Um, and on top of that, you're just going to be able to have a massive boss monster stealing their cards. You've taken away three of their cards. They've got three more cards to play with. They're locked under a rivalry. They're controlled by a torrential tribute, anything like that. And because he's a fiend, if you've got fiendish rhino, torrential tribute does nothing. So it's very, very cool, very, very powerful, and I absolutely love it in this particular version. It takes up so many spaces that when you look at a danger version, it's a lot more difficult to kind of justify and play around with. But in a version like this, it doesn't actually matter. Your extra deck is pretty fluid. Um, you just want to keep it more fiend focused to make it as easy as possible. So you don't need to worry about any of your other effects going astray or any effects going a bit crazy. 
but still very, very cool and fully enjoyable. So, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this build. I hope, hope it's given you a couple of different options and opened your eyes to a different way of playing this deck. I feel that we are definitely in a spot before fights on hi uh, Photon Hype and Overdrops where you can be as experimentative as possible and actually look at um, unlocking different options and different spicy techs to help you deal with the upcoming format. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Like I said, if this video gets 50 likes in the first 24 hours, I will put the deck list to YGO Pro um, or Dual Book in the description below. And it will also unlock an another layer of Dark World content that I'll let you guys choose what you want to see. Anyway, thank you for watching. As absolutely always, guys, stay safe. And of course, happy dueling.